Reuters, Eric Miller embarking on a customary pre-season tour to play in the International Champions Cup Tottenham finished the tournament with two victories and penalty shootout defeat against three European heavyweights, Roma, AC Milan and Barcelona, respectively. It was a promising pre-season campaign, especially given the context. Spurs had nine World Cup semi-finalists enjoying an extended break, which meant Maurizio Pochettino had to project his faith into his youth players to perform in pre-season. Instead of being outclassed, it was an opportunity that these academy graduates seized with both hands, as the likes of Luke Amos particularly impressed. Such promising individual performances and encouraging results should somewhat lift the doom and gloom shrouding North London at present, perpetuated by their worrying lack of transfer activity. Here are the winners and losers of Spurs' ICC campaign. Winners Reuters, Dennis Poroya player must fans expected to leave the club this summer, Fernando Llorente impressed in the ICC and demonstrated a reliability when called upon. The 33-year-old striker netted twice in Tottenham's opener against Roma, which will go some way in dispelling doubts over his suitability to the role of Harry Kane's understudy. The Spanish forward has told reporters he wants to stay at the club regardless of his place in the starting eleven, stating that he feels very good here. He continued, I would like to help the team more than last year and try to score more goals, given Kane's scoring record in August and the fact that he's basically not had a pre-season, Urente could find himself starting against Newcastle on the opening day of the Premier League. His performances will help in removing doubt. Reuters, Dennis Poirot with Hung Min Sun missing the first month of the season whilst on international duty with South Korea, there's a void that needs to be filled on the flank. A problem accentuated by Spurs' lack of transfers. Two solutions have emerged from the ICC, however. Firstly, January signing Lucas Moura netted himself a brace in the 4-1 win over Roma and looked incisive on the ball throughout, running directly at opposition defenders and getting into promising pockets of space in the box. With six months already at the club, coupled with a full pre-season, Lucas is set to play a key role. George Kevin Nakudu, moreover, impressed in the States. The Frenchman found the net against Barcelona and scored the game's only goal against Milan, a powerful effort from the edge of the back. He showed great awareness to pick up the loose pass and was energetic down the left wing in pursuit of the ball. Both players were winners of the ICC campaign and offered different options out wide, made more important, too, by the injury to Eric Lamella, who missed the final two games of the tour. Reuters, Eric Miller's six academy graduates started against Milan last night, and they should be proud of the 1-0 victory they earned against their near-full-strength opponents. Particularly impressive were Luke Amos, whose range of passing injected creativity into the midfield, and Oliver Skip with his seemingly endless bundles of energy. He's really taking the game by his hand and trying to do his thing. His courage, he's not scared to get the ball. He's not scared to tackle. He's an all-around midfielder. I think with a lot of training and when he's a little older, he'll be there, Christian Eriksen on 17-year-old Skip. Cameron Carter Vickers, George Marsh, Anthony Georgiou, TJ Ioma and Kyle Walker-Peters also made appearances throughout the campaign. For Walker-Peters, who was man of the match against Newcastle this time last season, this is an opportunity to take the next step and benefit from Kieran Trippier's absence following the World Cup. Amos, similarly, has thrust himself into contention for a start after standing out in the ICC. Reuters, Dennis Poroy Mousa Dembele is perennially rumored to be leaving the club, Eric Dyer is recovering from the World Cup and Harry Winks was left at home as he rehabilitates from last season's ankle injury. To compound the issue, Victor Wanyama was prematurely sent home from the tour with a recurrence of the knee injury that kept him out last season, as he seems to be headed to the same unfortunate place as Sandro Ranier, whilst Tottenham fret over a potential injury to Musa Sissoko. This leaves an enormous gap to be filled in the centre of midfield, and with no new arrivals so far this summer, it's creating a state of panic ahead of the Newcastle game.
It puts significant pressure on Dyer to get fit in time for the opening game as he remains the only defensive midfielders capable of playing. Amos, too, could find himself thrown into the deep end after impressing in the States. Pochettino might publicly state his comfort in playing youngsters to start the Premier League campaign, but it could well be a case of towing the party line and disagreeing behind the scenes. Tottenham fans, though, are only presented with what they see in public and, therefore, are left holding their heads in their hands over a lack of signings. It's a situation that many feel will hamper their start and leave them trying to make up ground on their rivals. With injuries to Lamella, Sissoko and Wanyama, squad depth is running extremely thin when put in the context of the World Cup absentees, which makes for troublesome viewing. If you want to read more football content, make sure you follow us on Twitter at RealSportGoals. Want to share your opinion? Why not write for us?